Hey, hey, hey. Tie off another out of this world story from our space. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, right? Not always. Whoever asks you for fancy, shiny things while you're doing the very best you can maybe doesn't always have your best interests at heart. Today in our space, college sweethearts turn sour. Wife left me for a rich older man and later came back begging for reconciliation. I, 25 male, met my wife, Brenda, 25 female, in college when we were still in our early 20s. We hit it off during her college second year. After dating for three years, we decided to marry. My parents cautioned us not to make a hasty decision because we were just out of college and I was not making much. Brenda has also just started her career and she was also not making much. I told Brenda that for the initial years, we would be living paycheck to paycheck. She said she was fine with it and assured me to work hard to make this work for us. A few months went very well, with both of us working to meet our needs. Life was smooth and easy for both of us. We both worked in the day and the evenings would be all ours. Both of us made sure to spend that time well. We planned small things or we just talked about our days and it never got monotonous or boring for me. We earned less but we were happy and satisfied with that. At least I am, and clearly she isn't. A year later, just after the first anniversary, honey problems started creeping in. I didn't plan the anniversary as fancy as she wanted. She wanted diamonds and I gave her a decent watch. I did whatever I could within my means or within my planning ability. I agree I'm not a good planner but she knows me better than anyone else. Instead of spending the money on outings, flowers and food, I could have given her diamonds, but I felt memories mattered more than materialistic things. But for her, she wanted it all. I reminded her that her current financial condition doesn't allow us to have it all. After that incident, Brenda decided to work harder to make up for the financial deficiencies. I understood that deep down she missed the luxuries she had dreamt about in her marriage. She was very vocal about it and never hid this from me. She wanted a good life and there's no harm in that. I promised her that eventually we would reach that level of financial state, but it takes time. You don't become rich overnight doing the right thing, but I think she's growing impatient. Brenda herself was ambitious as well as determined and she started finding out ways and methods to make the financial condition better. She took more freelance work and gave an extra time whenever she could. Her only aim now was to make as much money as she could to fulfill all her dreams. She also enrolled into some new courses to get better paying job opportunities. I also tried my best to put in extra hours and earn more, but the months passing by, Brenda's desire for luxurious life is driving her restless. But, even after all these efforts, the difficulties remained. The only thing that happened with this struggle was the suffering we both met in her relationship. This financial instability and Brenda's discontentment is leading to a lot of arguments between us. Brenda is finding it impossible to live with me and she had said it to my face a lot of times. I can see that Brenda is tiring herself more than she should have, and she's compelling me to do the same. She's always exhausted by the end of the day, and had made her very frustrated and irritable. We're not getting to spend any quality time together. I'm not happy with what is going on, but I had no other choice. As for me, I'm also managing two jobs to meet her demands, but the constant pressure of the finances made me frustrated, keeping my mind on a constant working mode to work out how to do better than what I'm doing. Sometimes I consider myself a failure, not being able to put up with the demands of the one person I love the most. I want to give her the best and I'm failing in it. The constant pressure is hitting me hard, it is making me question my self-worth, if I'm not enough for her. She wanted a good life. But what constitutes a good life? Does it always have to involve materialistic things? Why can a good life mean being happy and healthy and abundant in love? I guess it's nice to want things, but what good is a life surrounded by nice things when it just sort of alienates you? I take you giving you your best, Topi. She's just unable to appreciate that, and I'm sorry for that. Update 1 I should have seen this coming, when I thought just to be financial problem came out to be a lot bigger. I never anticipated that my college love would do something like this. So our hectic life continued for a few more months. Brenda had engrossed herself in the various jobs she had been appointed to. Things seemed to have settled between us. Things started looking brighter for us. Brenda earned quite well from her side hustles. I urged her to use that money to fulfill all her desires while I took care of the household expenses all by myself. To my amazement, Brenda was often seen in fancy dresses and accessories Happy most of the time and all. I thought this was due to her earnings until the truth unfolded. Though she came home late, I never found her tired of or lethargic. Rather, she seemed enthusiastic and more energetic for the next day. I was glad of the good tidings her busy schedule had caused. She would give me a limited but a wholesome time. This routine followed for a few weeks, but then something strange happened. On her return home from work one day, 
She was agitated. She went to bed straight and dozed off. This continued for more than a week when it was bothering me. Whenever I asked her the reason, she would snap at me or said that it w she was tired of working so many hours. I told her to let herself free and get rid of the extra work. But this topic always turned into a heated argument, so I tried to avoid it. The best I could do was make her go off in dinner and let her be in her space. I was upset as I was now living with a machine rather than a person. A machine that worked from 8 in the morning to 10 or 11 in the night. She hardly said hi or bye to me and that's it. I was lacking her time and love. For me, money was never priority, but for her, it was all she needed. After a lot of struggle, I made myself understand this better truth and learned to live with this. It was Friday and I was running late due to additional work at the office. I texted her that I would be late. My message was left on red without any reply. I reached home around 10, hoping she would have returned by now, but there was no sign of her. I thought she went out with friends. I didn't bother her by calling or texting because she really goes out. I was too tired to make dinner and dozed off on the couch waiting for her. When I woke up, it was almost midnight. I called her, but she didn't respond, and after a while, her phone was out of reach. I thought her phone had drained off. I tried her for a few more times, and in the tiredness, I dozed off again. The next morning, I got up feeling very hungry because I hadn't eaten anything since the last day's lunch. I went to the kitchen normally, looking for something to eat. My eyes fell upon a neatly folded piece of paper on the kitchen counter. When I unfolded the paper, I was shocked to see what was in my hands. It was a handwritten note from Brenda. This letter alone was enough to smash my being. Brenda had decided to leave me. The note said she found an actual man who could afford her lifestyle. The truth was better. The moment was so tormenting and painful that it is hard to describe. The reality seemed to haunt me. I was left shocked and jolted. I didn't know what to do or how to process this. Out of shock, I called Brenda's parents to ask them if they knew about her whereabouts. They denied knowing anything. I was so confused I didn't tell them anything and hung up. My emotions choked me and I called my friend and fumbled about my misery. He ran to my place because I sounded distraught. My condition for the next few days and a few weeks is hard to describe. I barely made it out of bed, just laid there doing nothing. I left all the other side hustles except for my full-time job because now none of it made sense. None of it was worth it. My friends and family tried to console me. My friends visited me every other day. Nights were the hardest. Eventually, I enrolled in therapy and turned myself into my work completely to avoid the thoughts about Brenda and my marriage. I worked as a distraction as it left me no time to get sad. I was drained in all ways, but I kept exhausting myself more. But the passage of time, I began to accept my new reality. It was not easy, but I'm proud to be able to come out of strong on the journey for the heartbreak to yielding. It's been four months now since she abandoned me and I'm yet to yield completely, but I've accepted my reality and moving ahead in life. Uh, I'm so sorry, OP. That's a huge kick to the groin. There's no rush in healing. Healing is like grief. It's different for everyone. Please don't think you did anything wrong. You didn't. You did everything right. You were the perfect, supportive, loving husband that any woman would dream of. Update 2 Life has been so weird in the last few years that I almost forgot about this thread. After Brenda left me, it took me many months to heal. It wasn't easy. More than a year later to the D-Day, I happened to meet Alice. She was a new recruit to the office. A simple yet elegant, hardworking, enthusiastic young lady. She was a quiet being and was often seen sitting lonely in her cap and even in her free time. Her nature intrigued me. I don't know why, but I was pushed to go ahead and ask her out for coffee. She declined my offer and told me that she would like to not be bothered. She had rejected me in a confident yet respectable manner. I honored her more after that, her, but I didn't dare to ask her anything after that. I wasn't hitting on her. I just wanted to speak to her or maybe know her. But once she denied, I never tried again. We talked only regarding work stuff, if at all. <laughs> a few months later, there was some team building activity in the office where I and Alice was appointed from our respective teams. This gave us a chance to interact. Gradually, we became friends and opened up personal discussions. She told her about the betrayal she had received from her husband, the sole reason for her loneliness. Her husband left her for his young secretary. We realized we were both inflicted with the same trauma. We connect over our ugly past and broken arts. Eventually, we started meeting outside the office. I felt comfortable in her company. Alice was a different girl. She understood me better. She was way more mature than my ex-wife. Though we connected over a similar past, we didn't want that to be the sole reason for our relationship. We wanted love to be the foundation of our relationship. Alice suggested couple counseling, so we took no baggage with us into our new life. We took sessions together. This helped us to address our insecurities that had been due to the past we had experienced. We took our own sweet time getting to know each other 
and falling in love. After being together for two years, I asked her out for marriage. It wasn't that I asked her out. We both knew that we wanted dad, but I made the move and officially asked her to marry me. The engagement was six months ago. We delayed the wedding for a while as I wanted to work on my promotion first, which was due in a few months. Alice was a supportive fiancé, and she was ready to wait for me. My experience had left some insecurities, and I didn't want to lose a gem, once again due to financial constraints. Alice had assured me that she was not of that type, but I didn't want to risk the chance. Last month, I kept the promotion I was overdue, and it was a big day for me. Alice and I celebrated it with friends and family, and that's when we announced our wedding, which is due in two months. I wanted to have it immediately, but Alice suggested that we take our time for preparation and not rush into things. Since then, Alice has been busy planning for our big day bit by bit. She took up the responsibilities I'm not so good at planning stuff. Besides, she is street smart. She knows where to find the best deal in the city. It was all so fun prepping for the wedding and enjoying the courtship period with Alice. But little did I know, the past was about to resurface in a way I had never expected. A few days back, Brenda reappeared in my life. However, it was not the same person. She looked miserable and shattered. It was a Sunday morning again. I woke up to a knock on the door. To my least expectation, there stood Brenda. It took me a while to realize it was her. I was shocked and rather upset about her sudden visit. Brenda was standing there with a sense of humility and regret. She asked me if she could come inside and we could sit and talk. I didn't quite remember if I said yes. The entire episode with her seemed like a hazy dream. The next I remember, I was sitting on the couch opposite to her and staring at her as if she was a ghost. She indeed looked like a ghost. I mean, she looked miserable. Clearly, she hadn't been treated well. I had never seen Brenda in such a state before. She took her crying bitterly and told me that she had made a huge mistake of leaving me. The man for whom she left me was nothing but a fraud. He gave her everything she wanted but respect. He treated her like trash. She liked her new life for a couple of years. She had everything she ever wanted. Cars, clothes, accessories, exotic foreign holidays and whatnot. But soon she realized that the man was a cheater. He laid his hands on every other woman he met. Right from his secretary, to his business partner, to his house attendants. When Brenda got to know the reality, it was too late. Also, she realized that their relationship was not like a normal one where she could boss him around or school him for his mistakes. He treated her no less than an animate object he was providing for. She was not even that close to him that she could fight with him regarding his infidelity. She just had to stay there and witness everything he did. He was a rich man in his 50s with generational wealth. What else do you expect from him? I'm not generalizing everyone, but this is how Brenda described him to be. She had bruises on her neck and hand. I asked her if that was a rich man's gift. She took it crying harder and said yes. She said whenever she complained about his behaviors, he was hitting her. She said he was dumb living like a prisoner and had fled from his mansion some time ago. She said she wanted to stay alone and heal herself, but she had nowhere to go and she also got to know from her family that I was remarrying Alice. Hence, she rushed to me before it was too late. As if she was not late, yet. I told her that she was already very late. In fact, she closed the door of her return the moment she decided to abandon me. She begged for forgiveness and said she was a fool to run after money and not understand the value of true love. To be honest, I struggled with conflicting emotions for a moment. I had loved this woman so dearly in the past. Deep down, the part of me that had once loved Brenda so deeply was not able to ignore the regret with which she had returned. I sat there patiently listening to what she had to say. I had just moved on and was building my new life with Alice, the woman who loved me and who had helped me heal. I cannot betray her for Brenda, who was nothing but flaky and self-centered. I asked Brenda to leave because I had to step out for a meeting with the wedding planner. She cried and held my hand, asking me for one last chance. I said it was not in a state to talk to her. She had damaged me very brutally when she ghosted me, and now she, again, shattered my being by mere reappearing in my life. Her presence annoyed me so much that I got up and went out of sight of the house, asking her to leave. She ultimately left. I rammed the door behind her. Her sudden visit brought back the memories of the past, but I was more concerned about confronting this to Alice. She wasn't in town. She went to spend a few days with her grandparents. I called her immediately. Maybe it was my guilt, but we couldn't talk much. She had network disturbances in her ancestral house. We spoke a few times after that day, but I didn't dare bring me up this topic. I don't intend to hide this from her, but she's in a limited network zone, and I don't want to discuss this over a phone call. She's supposed to return tomorrow, and I'm nervous about how she's going to react to Brenda's visit. Brenda is my past, as she would never become my present or future, but I'm scared that this would ruin my chances with Alice. I'm crack scared. If you're honest, and Alice is the woman you claim to be, there's nothing to worry about. Also, you wouldn't ever seriously consider going back to Brenda. There's nothing Brenda could give you that would make you happy. Alice makes you happy. 
You guys have built something so special that not a lot of people can say the same. Brenda is old news. She chose the path she's on. Update 3 Alice returned from her grandparents excited and thrilled telling me about the, all the gifts and heirlooms she got from her grandparents and great uncle. I tried to act normal but she sensed the struggle I was going through. She knew I was distracted. She asked me politely what the matter was. It was then that I could not control myself. I blurted out everything. I told her about the unexpected return from Brenda, her regrets over the past decision, and her pleadings for another chance. Now, I could see the insecurity in Alice's mind but she kept her calm. She didn't say anything, just nodded throughout and asked me about my decision. I held her and assured her that there was nothing to decide. I never had a second thought about our marriage. I loved Alice and wanted to spend my life with her. I told her that I was nervous because I was in a dilemma but because I feared how she would react to Brenda's visit. She acted maturely and said it didn't matter to her until I was unmoved by Brenda. A few days later, Brenda again showed up at my house. I wasn't home. Alice answered the door. Brenda lost her mind seeing Alice in the house. She asked Alice to call for me, but when she got to know that I wasn't home, she hurled abuses at Alice, accusing her of being a homewrecker. Alice said she was calling for a while and asked Brenda to come when I was there, but she kept calling her names. Alice then gave Brenda the piece of her mind. It led to a huge argument between them when Alice threatened to call the police on Brenda. After that incident, I received several calls and tests from Brenda, but I didn't answer them all. One day, she also showed up at my workplace, but I didn't meet her. After waiting for hours when she was about to leave, she saw Alice in the office and unleashed her frustration upon her. Alice called the office security to throw out Brenda. I was feeling bad that Alice had to go through so much because of my past. I have had enough now too. It was the time to put Brenda in her place and let her know she wasn't worth the second chance. Regrets alone don't count. I called Brenda's parents and asked her for her location. I took Alice along with me and knocked on her door. Her parents might have told her that I took her address. She answered the door excitedly, but seeing Alice with me, she turned better. Seeing her face, I couldn't resist my anger and frustration. I started blurting out things. I tried to keep my words less severe, but I managed to express the pain and disappointment that had been built up in me. I told her up front that I loved Alice was going to spend the rest of my life with her, and that Brenda was no less than a dose to me. She held my hand and cried, but I shrugged her off and asked her to stay away from me. I told that my wedding with Alice was scheduled for the next week, and that she now needed to respect my choice and decision, which solely was Alice now. She didn't stop there and tried her last bet, texting and calling both of us to call off the wedding. She also reached out to Alice's parents to tell them I didn't love Alice and was marrying her to get back at Brenda and nothing else. When it got too much, I filed a restraining order against Brenda. After that, she's not reached out to any of us. I guess she understood that I was not going to move away from my decision. Soon she accepts a reality. Good for her. I'm just excited to marry my love, Alice, and spend my life with her. I feel so lucky to have her in my life. Brenda went crazy, and that's no one's fault but her own. I feel bad for Alice who got all the abuse spat at her. She didn't deserve it at all. The only thing she's guilty of is loving a man who loves her back. Honestly, she's way too kind because anyone else would have called the cocks and should have called the cops. Brenda didn't deserve the compassion that Alice showed her. Alice sounds like the woman you've always needed in your life. So happy for the two of you. Hopefully Brenda can bug her off and learn to live with the choices she's made. What do you think? Or would you have said to Brenda upon her return? Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you soon on our space.